Hi, my name is Lise Colucci, and I'm one of Queen Being's life coaches. Today, I answer some questions from narcissistic abuse survivors about how to let go, how to move on, how to take care of yourself, and bring your focus back to yourself. If that sounds good, hit subscribe and let's go. I'm going to read a question from a survivor. How do I stop being dissociated? I'm doing all the right things and in therapy and I still don't feel anything. I am, however, still living under the same roof as the narcissist in separate rooms. Am I staying in this state as a defense and is it impossible for me to get out until I leave? With this association, it's because you're clever. It's because you've learned that to float away or to disconnect from what's happening in the, with the abuser is safer and keeps you from going into a reactive state. So it's a sort of shutting down. You're right. And it can feel like numbness. I think you're right in that still being around the toxicity and the toxic person is keeping you in that state, at least to some degree. There are some things you can do to begin feeling again in a safe way, because if it's not safe to feel what's actually happening around you and safe to feel comfortable in your own home because you have a narcissist living there, then going at it from a different angle might help. You can try by paying attention to what does feel okay. So taking some time to pay attention to your body. Where, where do I feel okay? Where do I feel relaxed? You know, get in a relaxed state and just pay attention to what feels okay. And then just allow whatever feelings come up to be there without judging them. It may be good and it may be bad. I mean, it's, it's what you're feeling at the time. The, the thing about disassociation is that we're able to somewhat control or push aside the bad feelings that we're having. And therefore, we don't actually experience them. So sometimes when we relax, they do come up. And so that could be why it's difficult to feel anything because these feelings will come up and then you immediately go into a dissociative state to protect yourself from feeling the thing that you don't want to feel. But maybe you actually do want to feel in order to heal, but you're not quite ready for, or <clears throat> because the narcissist is still around, you are not entirely safe. So feeling the safe things, knowing things that are safe and, and allowing yourself to feel them. You can try using your senses. You can get some scents that you like, be around them, go out into nature. So the thing is with healing, it's a journey back into yourself. We get so far out of ourself when we are abused that, and so involved in the life of the narcissist or in the abuse itself, that we lose touch with ourself. And so it makes sense that numbness would go along with that as well. So as you work for healing, you can work your way back into yourself. And again, through the senses, simply be in the moment with where you're at. So if you're out in nature and you can smell the trees and you can feel the cool air or the warm air, depending where you are, or you can feel a breeze or rain falling or whatever it is you're feeling, then you're more in that moment and you are experiencing a moment that is in real time in your body with whatever emotions come up for you. And you can just be there with it without judging it, just allowing it. It's a sort of like moving mindfulness practice where you can um, use, your, use your senses to take in and be present to whatever your surroundings are. Um, that is one way to begin to make baby steps toward feeling. You don't expect it all to come back at once. Generally, there are waves that come back, like there's anger, there's grief, there's frustration, there's shame. There's all kinds of darker negative emotions that can come rushing in when we start working on these things. And we don't want to be afraid of them because we need to process whatever it is we're feeling. But at the same time, we don't need to push to have that happen too fast. If you start building the positive underneath you, then you'll have somewhere to turn to when the harder stuff comes up as you're healing. So working toward just being present, working toward if you do have an experience where you feel any joy or any happiness, to take a moment to appreciate it. You can try gratitude journals. You can every morning 10 things that you're grateful for. And as Angie says, three things you love about yourself. So that is super important. It brings you into the moment. It brings you into acknowledging the things that are positive in the world and in your life and acknowledging the things that are positive about yourself in a way that's both 
using your mind and feeling your way to the things that you are grateful for or that you love. Building this up in a way where you are creating a positive foundation within yourself and allowing the numbness for the time being to just be there as part of whatever's going on. Because if you're not ready and the narcissist is still there, you perhaps emotionally aren't safe enough to feel and you don't need to worry, it will come back. Your feelings will have the full spectrum once again, once you are safe enough to do so. And as you keep working on it this way. Another interesting way to think of it is that this is a protector. This, this dissociation is protecting you from the full blow of the emotions that are within you. So we can actually thank the protector. We can thank that part of us that has this great skill and this ability to do this and know that it's serving a purpose right now. If you're still in the situation or if there is a lot of trauma happening around you, it allows you to function in your day and not completely crumble under the weight of the abuse or the narcissistic toxicity. So understanding that it is like a muscle where it's, it's in use right now and it's in overuse right now, and that when the time comes when you are free from the narcissist and you're free from the toxicity in your life, that you can put that muscle aside, you can relax it and start bringing in the things you're trying, as I suggested before, to build the positive into your life, to become present to the present moment, to, to allow the feelings that are there without judgment, and then to nurture yourself when you do feel things come up, when you do feel anything come up, to having that positivity behind you helps you have somewhere to go, and it helps you have it helps you to let go of the protector when it's time. So all of these mechanisms that we put into place to protect ourselves from abuse or to protect ourselves from feeling the abuse are our strengths and they're our protectors, but we have to understand that when it's time, have, that's when the trauma bonds start having a little bit less of a hold on you. So some ways to focus back on self are similar to what I suggested with attempting to not dissociate, which are to bring in your senses, to get out into nature, to take walks, to focus on doing things that bring you into the present moment. So anything that allows you to feel where you are in space and time and, and observe the room around you, you can do things to orient, to come back into your body and notice what's around you. That brings you back to the present moment. So then to turn that back towards self, you can then notice, oh, okay, my body feels relaxed. I feel tense, tension in my back. I feel like my nose is stuffy. Whatever you're feeling, you know, you get bring your attention back into your body. And then from there, you know, you start to notice the things you're thinking and you start to notice the things you're feeling. You start to notice yourself more. In essence, it's very similar to the first question. More specifically, things that you can do to bring focus onto yourself. You can research a topic that you find interesting until you can explain that topic to somebody else who, do, who knows nothing about it. You can find a class that sounds interesting and actually sign up and then go take it. You can learn a new job skill. That's a great one because it benefits your life in, in different areas. You can take an exercise class that benefits your body and your mind and your whole life. You can, things you can do for free are, you can, you can get out and meet new people in a safe way, in a friendship way, by doing events or meet up. Having an interest that you engage in brings the focus back to something positive in your life. And through that, you bring the attention back to yourself. If, it's, if you're not taking care of yourself, if you are skimping on your grooming, if you're skimping on your eating, or you're not exercising at all, or you are not sleeping well, those are all places you can turn some focus on. You can research different exercises. You can research different cuisines and learn to cook some. You can, you can realize that you need more sleep. You can meditate before you sleep. You can step up your grooming so that you look the way you want to look for yourself. In that, you're putting attention to the care of your body and your appearance in a way that pleases you. You can rearrange your room. You can decorate a room. Create something that is all yours, even if it's a corner. Even you can do this really super cheap by getting little tiny items that are inexpensive, some napkins or anything, anything, one little thing that is inexpensive and have it on a table and clear the space, make it how you want it to look and have that object represent 
your care for yourself. I mean, not about stuff. It's more about creating beauty around you or something sensory that you enjoy that makes you feel at home and makes you feel like you're taking care of yourself. Another one that I find useful is to find a topic that is not narcissism to read about that has to do with self-improvement or self-growth or positivity, inspiration, whatever it is for you. It can be anything. <clears throat> it can divide your time. If you're going to listen to, you know, 20 minutes of videos on narcissism, then read 20 minutes or more on the topic that you've chosen. Finding balance between understanding and educating yourself on narcissism, which is super important, and taking care of yourself, focusing on yourself and moving forward with your life is a place that you can tip the tables toward healing rather than staying stuck in obsessing on the narcissist. And one more question that relates to the other two is three more days until I will celebrate 100 days of no contact. Yay! Congratulations on that one. How long does it take to stop thinking about them and what they're doing? He still consumes a good piece of my head. Now, this can go back to the other two questions, whereas putting the focus on yourself more and more. If you've had a situation where you've had to intensely focus on this person and in order to get out or in order to divorce or in order to be free from them, and you had to, like if you're in a co-parenting situation or you're in a situation where you still have to deal with them on some level um, or are trying not to deal with them, but you have to deal with them third party, like a court, going to court or anything where where it's still important enough to maintain focus on them to some degree, but you want to stop the thinking about them and wondering what they're doing. The things I suggested in the other two questions apply here as well. Get your focus on yourself. Divide your focus time. Pay attention to how much time you are focusing on this person and give yourself equal time. If there's not enough time in the day for that, then you need to cut back what you're focusing on them so that you can make time for both things until the time is such that you can stop focusing on them. If it's a situation where you're just, you just keep thinking about them and you can't stop and you don't need to be thinking about them. In other words, it's final, it's over, the discard has happened and you're no contact and they're out, but you can't stop yourself from thinking. Then again, the same things apply. A lot of self-care and a lot of self-focus and self-focus in positive ways. Another thing that can help is to focus on other people. When you're ready, and if you're the type of person that this is helpful for, volunteering can help. I would say to begin with, volunteering somewhere positive, not somewhere where you're being dragged down into the negativity and the hurt of other people's lives. Not everyone can take that. You know yourself better than anyone, so know where your limits are. Maybe it's petting cats. Maybe it's, you know, there's all kinds of volunteer opportunities out there that are less intensely dramatic and can be very giving and very um, giving back to self where you see yourself in a situation doing something to help another being or another person and then your focus starts to shift your focus starts to shift on the things you enjoy on giving to others and receiving from others if you've been focusing intensely on court cases or on the narcissist because you've needed to get away you've likely been building up a, an intensity in your thought process and an intensity of thinking where you're in research mode or you are in hyper focus mode. So you can take that energy and find something else to hyper focus on that is beneficial to your life but has nothing to do with the toxicity or the narcissist. It's beneficial to get away from them, yes, and you needed to do what you needed to do. But now it's time to focus back on you and to focus on the things around you, to focus on giving back to yourself and receiving from the world around you as well. We forget ourselves when we've been with a narcissist. We forget to include ourselves in the equation. We forget ourselves in gratitude. We forget ourselves in daily functioning. We forget ourselves entirely sometimes. So coming back to self, understanding that isn't a selfish act. It's a, an act of healthy living and that people who are happy and are thriving do this naturally. They do this. Maybe they learn to do this but they, they're not selfless in the sense that self doesn't exist. We have to exist in the world that we're in, and we are equally as important as everybody else. We also get in a cycle of being ready for the next thing. So if the narcissist is gone, 
but we are constantly thinking he's going to come back. He's going to rage. He's going to, he's going to have this reaction or she is going to smear me or she is going to do something. Our minds are stuck worrying about that. So you can't control what the other person is going to do. What's not happening in this moment is not worth your worry. Yes, you should safeguard. Yes, you should protect yourself. There are plenty of videos on how to be safe. But what we're talking about here is how to not continually think about them 100% of the time and how to slowly have our own life, hopefully faster than slower, create our own life that is free of this hook that they have on us. Understand that you possibly are in a state of heightened fear and awareness and to work to understand that you cannot control the actions and the behaviors of other people. You can build a self-care go-to kit. So when and if the things you're worried about do happen, you have a plan for yourself to take care of yourself afterwards. Right there in itself can create a lot of relief because if you know, okay, if he hoovers, I'm going to feel bad, but I have, I have some nice music. I have some words of affirmation. I have a list of all the horrible things he did. I have my favorite pajamas. I have all of these things right here. And if that happens, I'll go to those things and I'll take care of myself. It's like having your best friend right there in your pocket, you know, that you can turn to when something happens. You can turn to yourself. So understanding if you are in a hypervigilant mode where you are anticipating the worst, but the worst hasn't happened or you're anticipating a Hoover and the Hoover hasn't happened. If you set up something to take care of yourself for if that does happen, then you can let go of the worry a little bit. Also, what we can't control, there is no point in worrying about because there is nothing we can do in those in that situation. So moving forward is the best thing for you, moving towards self. So there you have it. There's some self-care, self-focus ideas for three different types of situations, all very similar answers. But you can see how you can apply shifting focus onto self, onto some things you love, onto things that interest you, onto other people, onto volunteering, to nature, to our senses, to who we are as human beings, instead of focusing all of our energy toward the narcissist and understanding who they are. Yes, that's important, but it is not everything. And in fact, it ends at a certain point and we need to move away from it back to self. You can see how it can apply to many different situations and many different types of questions. And I hope that you find that helpful and you can put some of that into practice. Let me know what you think. For information about me, again, my name is Lisa Colucci. I'm one of Queen Being's Life Coaches. I can be found in the links below. Now, for information about coaching or group coaching, see the links below. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below as well. Hit subscribe and see you next time.